What's up everybody, this is Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today we're going to be going back over some baseline basics, again fucking with the sub bass um, and this is, um, this is a question I get a lot. Um, it's just it, over and over again how to you know make my sub bass so that I can hear it on my laptop hear it on my phone hear it on my earbuds um, and this is you know this is this is a big problem with the with a lot of people especially starting out um, especially people who are using monitors especially people who use KRK monitors um, it's just you know you're in the studio you're you know you're on you're on your big boy speakers and then you go ahead and bounce that out and um, you're super excited about it and you send a beat to someone's macbook and they're like yo who's the beast um and that's just because you know we're not uh we're, we're getting we're getting these programs we're you know we're getting daws we're you know we're hacking all these uh, all these all these plugins and getting and getting uh, access to the tools very fast but we're not doing the due diligence on the research on what these sounds are made of now a sub bass what a sub bass is, is a sub bass is a sine wave and it's a very um, it's a very simple frequency and it's a very low frequency and the way that frequencies work right is if we take a spectrum analyzer and we look at it here typically your sub bass is going to live um, you know between between like a hundred and tw you know say 200 on a good day right uh, 200 Hertz and and zero now this range right here 200 to zero it's not uh, uh, for the most part especially especially like below um, below 80 it's not a frequency range that is heard it's something that's felt um, it's a it's a vibration um, that's why that's why when you go to a concert and you hear and, and you hear really loud bass like you feel it or you go to a festival and and it all it all centers it all centers around bass music is because it the the speakers push the air and it interacts with your body in a way that that vibrates you know your skin your organs and everything and that's what gives you the feeling so if you're using a sub bass patch um, like this one you see the majority of the energy is, is up around here now because we have we have some uh you know some tones that are some frequencies that are getting all the way up into like um 1k this is a this is an audible sub bass now if i was to take and say um put an eq on this right and say i was to just high cut all that out at 100 if you're listening in headphones now, you lose a lot of it, but you still have the feeling. So the process of making a sub bass more audible on smaller systems, um, on earbuds, on laptops and things like that is you have to introduce um, a, some type of harmonics or some type of frequency content into the upper registers you know from from 200 on up as high as you could get it and the more and the more um, of that information you introduce the more audible the um, the sound will be on a smaller system and there's a couple ways to go about doing this um, one of the oldest tricks is to take your is to take your bass and um, go ahead and and bounce it. Now this is Omnisphere. I've been, you know, everybody's having problems with Omnisphere playing that first note. And the way that I do it is I'll just go ahead and duplicate my, uh, I'll duplicate my track, merge it, and press Control B so I can bounce it down. And all right, so now I have now I have my sub bass here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transpose this up an octave, twelve semitones, right? Now. When I go ahead and play this, let's put the spectrometer on the master. Let's just turn this off. Get rid of this guy. Now without this, 
let's look at let's look at our frequency. Let's just solo this. All right, so you see where we're at. We're ending at about 1K. Now, if I go ahead and bring this guy in, let's see if we add anything. Now, it's the instantly, instantly much more audible. Um, and then, you know, obviously within the context uh, context of the mix that can get overwhelming so what i like to do when i'm mixing stuff like that is i is i get my sub bass where you know where i want it uh, mix wise and usually the and usually the way that i go about doing that is i'll focus on it with the kick And I'll just kind of turn it down and then I'll go ahead and turn the sub bass up until I start to lose my kick and then I'll pull it back down. All right, so I like my kick there. Then I'll go ahead and bring I'll go ahead and bring the um Go ahead and bring the the upper octave in and just and just slide it up and do the same thing until it starts to really pop out. And then if I start to feel like like it, it gets a little phasey on the bottom, what I can do then is go into uh, bring a pro EQ in and just kind of keep that upper harmonics and get, and get rid of the get rid of the lower stuff now if i want to take it a step further and and really push it um studio one has a great stock plug-in um the bit crusher that i like to use to bring out bass um a lot of times I'll go to this before I'll go to Decapitator um, just because I really like the vibe of it and I like to use the foldback setting and just kind of hit the overdrive. I'll turn that bit depth down so I don't get a lot of that, um, that washy sound. Now that's that's really obnoxious. So at this point, um, let me see. Let me clip it a little bit too. Now what I could do is uh, bring back the gain and just kind of mix it into taste. Let's take the kick out so you can see how much that's affecting everything. See, now we're up in 2K. Oh, man. Yo, y'all got to get ready. Me and uh, SP Anonymous, if you guys aren't fucking with his channel, definitely go and check his channel out. Amazing music theory tutorials, an inspirational guy. We're going to be working on a podcast very soon. You guys are going to love it. Um, more on that later. But yeah, um, so this is this is and this is pretty much like the basic bare bones um, technique that you can use. And then and then once you have a solid foundation of this. Um, and, and you understand, okay, adding, uh, you know, adding distortion, it isn't, it isn't going to destroy my signal and make it sound crunchy, especially when I do it in parallel with another octave stacked on top of it. Parallel meaning that you have your original bass signal is untouched and unprocessed. And then you have another signal, which you're kind of mixing in, um, to add those act, those extra harmonics. You can now say, okay, well, uh, that's the bit crusher flavor. What if I add? 
add, you know, if I go into, um, you know, my distortions, like say, uh, say, um, say I want to use the decapitator. And so I do kind of the same thing. Or maybe I really want to get obnoxious. See how much content you're getting up there. Now you can just kind of use the mix knob. Bring this down. And then play it in the context of the mix. So yeah, that's why you know that's why that's why distortion is um, is a plugin that can get to be um, really expensive and really exotic and really um, sought after is because it is it's it's more than just making something sound crunchy or um, you know distorted. It's it's more of a tool to enhance the upper harmonics and add um, more high and mid range frequencies to a sound, um, you know, using, you know, using distortion tactics that when, that when blended in very subtly can have, you know, a really great and pronounced effect, um, on signals, um, even though you're using it in a very, you know, in a very tasteful and, um, reserved way so that is the basic foundation you can go ahead and take this information um and just kind of play with all the different um all the different distortions that you've accumulated or even if you just have studio one and you're just using uh the three options inside the bit crusher you can really uh get into kind of the basic tenets of sound design um as far as you know as far as making bass patches and things like this um so this is concrete zebra with craft master productions look out for the sp anonymous and concrete zebra podcast keep it simple don't be basic and we'll see you on the next